the Global Sinnoh Tour event is coming up this month in Pokemon Go. And in this video, I'm going to go through all of the event details, event tips, Pokemon worth catching, raids worth raiding, and more. So the event will be taking place on February 24th and 25th from 10am to 6pm local time each day. This event is available to all trainers and you don't need to purchase a ticket to play. However, there are two $5 tickets that you can purchase to get additional timed research tasks, bonuses and rewards, but more on that later. Firstly, I'll run through the main features of the Global Sinnoh Tour event. So there will be a new Masterwork research available for purchase in the shop for $5 and it will reward you with an encounter with Shiny Shaman. Origin Form Dialga and Palkia will be making their global debut after appearing in Los Angeles for the in-person event the previous weekend. These forms are separate like Origin Giratina and they don't work like Mega Evolutions or Primora versions. So the global event is split up into four hours, each hour represents a habitat and after the four hours of rotating habitats, the four hours are then repeated to make up eight hours of the event day. So you will get two hours of each habitat separated by four hours. I will go through the times for each of the habitat and what each habitat contains later on in the video. So two of the habitats, the the ancient grove and the geothermal lagoon habitats will have space-time anomalies which essentially alter the spawns during those hours. So during these space-time anomalies in these habitat hours, instead of the regular Dialga and Palkia in 5-star raids, Origin Dialga and Palkia will be available and they are shiny eligible. They will also have a chance to come with their signature moves Roar of Time and Spatial Rend respectively when caught. So these signature moves also have adventure effects which are effects that you can use outside of battle. Origin Dialga's Roar of Time has the ability to pause incense daily incense, star piece and lucky egg timers for 5 minutes, costing 5 Dialga candy and 5000 stardust. This can be increased up to 24 hours if you have enough candy and stardust to increase the effect. For spatial rend, it will be able to expand the encounter radius of wild pokemon for 10 minutes, costing 5 Palkia candy and 5000 stardust. Again, this effect can also be increased up to 24 hours if you have the resources to do so. If you want to know more about space time anomalies, how adventure effects works and the future of them, you can check out this other video that I put out recently. I'll put the link in the description for that video. You will also get to choose diamond or pearl versions of the event. The version affects the chances of getting the signature moves on Origin Dialga and Palkia. If you choose diamond you'll get an encounter with Origin Dialga that knows Roar of Time. If you choose pearl you'll get an encounter with Origin Palkia that knows Spatial Rend. You can get both Origin forms with the new moves regardless of which version you pick, but which of the versions that you pick will make it so that you're more likely to get the signature move on the corresponding legendary of that version. So the will be Sinotaur Global exclusive party play challenges leading to an encounter with Reggie Gigas, and there'll be a branching Team Go Rocket special research story allowing you to pick a Sinnoh starter and you'll get to encounter other Sinnoh Pokemon like Spiritomb. Also, White Striped Basculin will be appearing on Roots during the tour and you'll have an increased chance of encountering Shiny Turtwig, Chimchar, Piplup, Stunky and Costume Pokemon and you'll have an increased chance of encountering Shiny Hisuian Voltorb, Hisuian Quillfish, Pachirisu, Chatot and Carnivine from Eggs. So so for the rotating habitats, the first up will be the bustling boardwalk, and the spawns will be Lucas and Dawn Hat Pikachu, Magnemite, Electabuzz, Porygon, Routes, Piplup, Starly, Bidoof, Trash Cloak Burmy, Weasel, Both Shellos, Drifloon, Glameow, and Finneon. The Ancient Grove habitat will be a space time anomaly habitat, and the wild spawns will be Pikachu wearing Ray's Cap, Pikachu wearing Akari's Kerchief, Hisuian Growlithe, Hisuian Voltorb, Tangela, Eevee, Misdravus, Nosepass, Roselia, Turtwig, Cricketot, Plant Cloak. Burmy, Combi, Cheruby, and Bronzor. The Toxic Dig habitat will be a regular habitat and the spawns will be Lucas and Dawnhat Pikachu, Apom, Yanma, Gligar, Sneasel, Duskull, Shinx, Cranidos, Shieldon, Sandy Cloak Burmy, Stunky, Gibble, Hippopotas, Skurupi, and Krogunk. And the last habitat will be the Geothermal Lagoon which will be another space-time anomaly habitat and the spawns will be Ray and Akari Pikachu, Hisuian Quillfish, Hisuian Sneasel, Lickitung, Rhyhorn, Magmar, Eevee, Togetic, Murkrow, Swinub, Snowrunt, Chimchar, Buneary, and Snova. Incense encounters during the busting boardwalk and toxic digs habitats will be unknown H, I, N, O, and S to spell out Sino. and for the ancient grove and geothermal lagoon habitats the incense spawns will be H, I, S, U to spell out Hisui. I will be going through which Pokemon are actually worth catching from all of these habitats later on in the video so stay tuned for that. So for the raids in one star raids during the busting boardwalk and toxic digs habitats will be Turtwig, Chimchar, and Piplup 
and during the ancient grove and geothermal lagoon habitats will be Rowlet, Cyndaquil and Oshawa. In three star raids, during the busting boardwalk and toxic digs habitat will be Torterra, Infinape and Empoleon, and in the ancient grove and geothermal lagoon habitats will be Hisuian Decidui, Typhlosion and Samurai. In five star raids in the busting boardwalk and toxic dig habitats will be Dialga and Palkia, and in the ancient grove and geothermal lagoon habitats will be the origin forms of Dialga and Palkia. In two kilometer eggs during the event will be Badu, Chingling, Bonsai, Mime Jr, Hapini, Munchlax, Riolu and Mantike. In 5km eggs will be Hisuian Voltorb, Hisuian Quillfish, Stunky and Gibble and in 10km eggs will be the regionals Pachirisu, Chatot and Carnivine. So the bonuses for the Global Cinematore for all trainers will be half egg hatch distance for eggs placed into incubators during the event. You'll be able to do up to 6 special trades per day. You'll get half Stardust cost for trades and there'll be no remote raid limit from February 23rd at 12am until February 25th at 11.59pm. You will be able to pick up a free GoTour 2024 t-shirt avatar item from the in-game shop starting from February 16th and from the same time there will be some additional avatar items you can purchase including Giratina helmet wings and jacket, Diamond Clan outfit and boots, Pearl Clan outfit and boots and Team Galactic outfit. There will also be some event themed stickers available from spinning poker stops, opening gifts and for purchase in the shop. So this is everything you get for free in the event but like I said earlier there are two additional tickets that you can buy for $5 each that will be available to purchase and will improve the gameplay. These are just essentially add-ons and you don't need them to participate. So they will become available at the start of the Road to Sinnoh event which is taking place on the five days before the Global Sinnoh Tour event from February 19th to the 23rd. During this time, Turtwig, Chimchar and Piplup will be available in the wild and in one star raids. Grottle, Monferno and Prinplup will be rare encounters in the wild and they'll be in three star raids as well. There'll be five different five star raid bosses, one for each day from February 19th to February 23rd leading up to the Sinotaur event. On the 19th will be Darkrai, on the 20th will be Cresselia, the Lake Trio in their respective regions will be on the 21st, Heatran will be on the 22nd and Giratina Origin Form will be on the 23rd. In two kilometer eggs will be Badu, Chingling, Bonsai, Hapini, Munchlax, Riolu and Mantike. There will also be event bonuses for the Road to Sinnoh event which will be half hatch distance, the remote raid limit will be increased to 10 and from the 23rd to the 25th there will be no remote raid limit as I mentioned previously. There will also be a free timed research for the Road to Sinnoh event that will reward encounters with Heatran, Giratina Origin, Cresselia and Darkrai so definitely worth doing this to get those free legendaries. And it is from the start of this event that the two $5 tickets will become available. The first First ticket will be the Road to Sinnoh Raid ticket and it will get you timed research rewarding 10 Dialga and Palkia candy, 5 Heatran, Giratina, Chrysalia and Darkrai candy XL and an Eevee fan mask. With this ticket you can also get an additional 5 KXP from completing raids, 1 additional candy for catching Pokemon from raids and 2 additional raid passes from spinning gyms each day of the event from the 19th to the 25th. So all of the extras from this ticket will be available during the Road to Sinnoh event and in the Sinnoh Tour global event that follows. So the other $5 ticket you can purchase is the Road to Sinnoh Hatch ticket. This will get you a timed research that will reward you with encounters with the regional Pokemon Pachirisu, Chatot and Carnivine. You will also get a Pikachu fan mask and you'll get bonuses of 2 times Hatch, XP, Candy and Stardust. Again, all of these extras from this ticket will be available during the Road to Sinnoh Tour event and the Global Sinnoh Tour event. Just bear in mind that with the timed research that comes with both of these tickets, they will be expiring on February 25th at 8pm after the Sinnoh Tour event finishes, so make sure you've completed them and claimed all rewards by that time. So that is all the details for Global Sinotaur, but how can you make the most out of it? If you're looking to grind some XP during this event, you could use Lucky Eggs to double your XP and you could purchase the Road to Sinnoh Tour raid ticket that will give you 5,000 bonus XP per raid. You will also get two additional raid passes per day, so more opportunities to pick up that XP bonus, which will be an extra 10k XP with a Lucky Egg. This means that with a Lucky Egg and with this ticket, you'll get 30k XP per raid that you do. If you are looking to hatch a lot of eggs during the event, then the Road to Sinnoh hatch ticket could be worth it because you do get two times hatch XP, Stardust and Candy. Out of the two tickets, I do think the raid ticket is the best because the extra two raid passes each day will be helpful, especially as there are different raid bosses in raids all week leading up to the Sinnoh Tour. Regarding candy, you can always use Pinat Berries to increase your candy gains, but you can also Mega Evolve a Pokemon that is the same type as the Pokemon that you're catching to increase the amount of candy, Candy XL and XP you get per catch. Each habitat has a pretty mixed spawn pool when it comes to types, so I would recommend Mega Evolving something that shares a type with the Pokemon that you want to get candy 
ready for the most. And like I mentioned previously, I will be going through the meta relevance of the wild encounters and the raid encounters later on in the video, so that might help you figure out what to prioritize and which mega evolution to do. So it's well worth doing your six special trades each day, especially as the Stardust cost is half. I would recommend playing with somebody who picks up the opposite version of you, so then you can trade Origin, Palkia and Dialga with signature moves with each other, so you can get them more easily. Trading during this season also gives you an extra candy and guaranteed XL candy per trade. And due to the fact that you need 35 Platinum Medals to get to level 49, trading will also help you with getting your Platinum Gentleman Medal. Also, if you are going to be playing with somebody else during Sinnoh Tour, I recommend partying up so you can beat raids more easily with party power, but also you'll be able to take on the encounters that lead to a reward of Regigigas. So for the Sinnoh Tour, remember there will be a half hatch distance and there'll be event eggs with featured Pokemon. But which out of these event Pokemon in these eggs are good targets? Well, in 2km eggs, Badoo has some relevance with Roserade being a decent grass type attacker and a top 10 poison type attacker. Mime Jr. is a possible encounter and it will evolve into the Europe regional Mr. Mime, which will be good for the dex entry for those of you that aren't in Europe. Munchlax is a possible hatch and Snorlax is ranked 65 in the Master League. Riolu will also be hatching from these eggs and Lucario is a top 10 fighting type attacker and it is particularly strong with power up punch against Giovanni for taking his shields down quick and taking out Persian. Lucario does also have a mega evolution coming at some point in the future and it will be the best fighting type attacker and a top 10 steel type attacker. Another notable hatch is Mantike and Mantine is ranked 10 in the Great League. Its perfect PvP IVs are 0, 15, 14 which would require you to trade with a low friendship level friend to re-roll the IVs lower to get an IV spread that is close to the perfect PvP IVs because as well as raids and field research, eggs also have a 10, 10, 10 IV floor. In 5km eggs we do get Hisui and Quillfish and Overquill is a strong poison type attacker. Gibble will also be available from these eggs and Mega Garchomp is the second best dragon and ground type attacker and Garchomp itself is ranked 33 in the Master League. It's good to note that both Hisui and Voltorb and Quillfish from these eggs will have increased shiny rates. Likewise, in 10km eggs, all three of the regionals, Pachirisu, Chatot and Carnivine will have increased shiny rates, so it's definitely the best place to try and get them. So when it comes to the wild encounters, which Pokemon are worth catching? Firstly, all of the costume Pikachu are well worth going after and specifically for their shinies because it is unlikely that they will return to the game in the future, so they will definitely be pretty rare. Also, catching Pikachu will help you out of getting your Platinum Pikachu fan medal. So for the bustling boardwalk habitat, Magnemite is a good spawn because Magnezone in its shadow form is the 8th best electric type attacker, so it could be worth getting some candy to power up a shadow Magnezone if you have one. Likewise, Electabuzz is another spawn worth going for for the candy because Shadow Electivire is the 5th best electric type attacker and number one in terms of DPS. So Routes is available and it is worth picking up because Mega Gardevoir is the best fairy type raid attacker. As Shadow Star Raptor is the fifth best flying type attacker, it could be worth picking up some Starly for some candy to power up a shadow version. So East and West Sea Shellos will be spawning in this habitat and they are regional Pokemon so worth getting them now while you can get them both. So in the Ancient Grove habitat it could be worth catching Tangler for candy for Shadow Tangrowth because it is a top 10 grass type attacker. Eevee will be available and some some of its evolutions do have meta relevance. Firstly, Umbreon is ranked 53 in the Great League and 97 in the Ultra League. Glaceon is a top 10 Ice type attacker and Sylveon is a top 10 Fairy type attacker and it is ranked 98 in the Master League as well. Bronzor is also spawning in this habitat and it is a strong Little Cut Pokemon. So in the Toxic Digs habitat, we have Gligar spawning and it is ranked 19 in the Great League currently and it is ranked 3 in its Shadow form. Additionally, its evolution Gliscor is ranked 23 in the Ultra League, so it's definitely a good idea to go for Gligar for Go Battle League. Sneasel is also available in this habitat and Weavile is a strong ice type attacker and it's even better in its shadow form being the second best overall ice type attacker. Shinx could be worth catching if you do have a shadow version because Shadow Luxray is a top 10 electric type attacker. Cranidos will be spawning and Rampardos is one of the best rock type attackers and in its shadow form it is the highest DPS rock type raid attacker in the game. Definitely worth going after this one because it has a lot of use in raid battles. Shieldon is also worth catching because Bastiodon is ranked 12 in the Great League. Another no notable encounter is Gibble because Garchomp is a decent dragon type attacker and a top 10 ground type raid attacker. It's even better in its shadow form and even better again in its mega form where it is the second best dragon type and ground type attacker. Garchomp itself is also ranked 33 in the Master League. It might also be worth picking up some Croagunk because Toxicroak is ranked 82 in the Ultra League and 57 in its shadow form. When it comes to the Geothermal Lagoon habitat, Hisui and Quillfish will be spawning and like I mentioned previously, Overquill is a decent poison type attacker. Hisui and Sneasel will be spawning 
Gaming and Sneasler is rank 85 in the Ultra League and 60 as a Shadow and it is rank 97 in the Master League and 73 as a Shadow. Lickitung is spawning and this Pokemon is definitely well worth catching because it is currently the highest ranking Pokemon in the Great League and it needs quite a lot of Exile Candy to power it up. Its evolution Licky Licky is also rank 72 in the Ultra League. Rhyhorn is also worth picking up because Rhyperia is a top rock type attacker and in its shadow form it's the second best rock type raid attacker. Rhyperia is also rank 60 in the Master League. Togetic is worth catching because Togekiss is a top fairy type raid attacker and it is rank 84 in the Master League. Swineb will be available and Mamoswine is a strong ice type attacker and it is the best ice type attacker in the game in its shadow form and it is rank 25 in the Master League. Snowrunt could be worth catching because Mega Glalie is the best ice type mega so really good for boosting Pokemon like Mamoswine in battle. Also Snowrunt's other evolution Frostlass is not bad in the Great League being rank 104. And lastly Snova will be spawning and Mega Abomasnow is a decent ice type mega but not quite as good as Glalie. Abomasnow is decent in Go Battle League being rank 86 in the Great League and 28 as a shadow and it is rank 47 in the Ultra League and 61 as a shadow. It's good to note that Unknown will be appearing on Incense so worth having some Incense up to get those if you're collecting them and also for the shinies. So these are the wild Pokemon that are worth catching but which Pokemon are worth your raid passes? So starting with the Road to Sinnoh raid bosses that will be available on the days leading up to the Sinnoh tour. Darkrai could be worth raiding because it is a top 10 dark type raid attacker and it is ranked 96 in the Master League. However, I would say that this one is a lower priority because there are better dark type attackers that are a lot easier to get and also it's not that high of a rank in Master League. So Cresselia will be available and it is one of the best Pokemon in the Great League being ranked 2 and it's ranked 4 in the Ultra League. I would also recommend raiding this one during its raid hour on the 20th to get Grass Knot because it is beneficial for Go Battle. League. It's worth noting that if you are looking for a Cresselia for Great League, you would need to trade it to reroll its IVs low enough to get under the 1500 CP cap of the Great League. You will also get a free Great League eligible Cresselia from the Road to Sinnoh time research, so definitely worth picking that up. Cresselia is a high priority if you play Go Battle League. So the Lake Trio don't have any meta relevance and they are region locked, but you can remote raid them from other regions if you want to. These are low priority Pokemon to go after, unless you need them for the decks or you're hunting their shinies. So Heatran is a top 10 fire type raid attacker and it is ranked 44 in the Master League. Again, I recommend raiding this one during its raid hour as well on the February 22nd so you can get its legacy move Magma Storm. I would say Heatran is a medium priority. Giratina Origin is worth going after because it is a top 5 ghost type raid attacker and it is ranked 67 in the Ultra League and 13 in the Master League. I recommend raiding this one during its raid hour on the 23rd as well to get Shadow Force if you want it as a raid attacker. I would put Giratina as a high priority for the Master League. So for the global Sinnoh Tour raids, Dialga is worth going after because because it is a top 5 steel type raid attacker. It's ranked 25 in the Master League and getting its candy is definitely worth it to use Roar of Time on the Origin form for its adventure effect of pausing the timer on premium items. Origin Dialga has a lower attack but a higher defense than the regular Dialga and with Roar of Time it will be a top dragon type raid attacker. I imagine it will also be really strong in the Master League as well if it has the same moves as the regular Dialga and the addition of Roar of Time. So for Palkia it's not a bad dragon type raid attacker but it's nothing special. However in the Master League it is ranked at 20. Again, raiding it will be a high priority for the candy for the origin form to use its spatial rend adventure effects, which expands the wild Pokemon encounter radius. The origin version of Palkia has better stats overall, and with spatial rend, it will be a strong dragon type attacker and better in the Master League as long as it gets the same moves as regular Palkia as well. I would put the origin forms of Dialga and Palkia at the highest priority for your raid passes. So, with that said, what are the other events that are coming up in Pokemon Go in February, and are they worth playing? If you want to know more about these, then check out these videos next.